What is a complete human? Is it a cover model? Is it a science geek? Is it a fitness expert? Or all of the above and more? Jana and Evan are crusaders that walk the earth looking at today's issues that touch our hearts and minds. The honest and hopeful outlook on the advancement of today's society. The science behind the decay of human relationships. The necessary preparations for future generations. Join us as we look deep inside ourselves and embark on a journey into becoming a complete human. Why all nootropic supplements aren't effective? What's... Most of it, you know, th that's a great question, too. And I think what it really boils down to is dosages. You know, here's a perfect example. I love alpha-GPC, alpha-glycerol phosphocholine. When we are born and we're drinking from the teat, uh, one of the constituent parts of breast milk that allows for the largest development of our, of our brain in the first year is alpha-GPC. Beyond that, we get a small amount from eggs, we get some from beef liver, but there's not a lot of dietary sources of GPC, but it's one of these amazing uh, chemicals. Um, it, it's a water phase phospholipid, it improves nerve conduction velocity, cell to cell communication, nerve conduction velocity, like all of these things, like it really has this demonstrable impact on the brain, but it's a really, really expensive material to make. So all of the clinical research on alpha GPC is shown at dosages of up to or of over 600 milligrams. But because it's so expensive, you find a lot of supplements and quality is one of them. I think I've seen, you know, there's a lot of these supplements out there that claim to be really good brain boosting products, but might only have 50 or 100 milligrams mm -hmm. of that. And it's a cost driver, right? The reality is, is if you were to put all of the clinically studied dosages of those things into a supplement, your monthly supplement could be two hundred dollars. Right. Um, the average person can't afford that. So the driving force in the lack of efficacy is usually dosage or ingredients that really haven't been studied enough to truly be effective. Right. So I wonder how much is placebo, right? I mean, people take these products, they have claims on them, they have these great ingredients in them, but they're not at the efficacious dose that you need to be effective. I, I think a huge part of it is placebo, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I can't even remember it. It's the Prevagen. Mm -hmm. Prevagen, I have a, it's jellyfish extract, mm -hmm. right? I have, re I have looked at that clinical research nine different ways. They've been sued by the FDA for, for claims or for the FTC for claims. Their clinical research shows almost no efficacy and even the efficacy that they were able to extract to show some type of claim was this tiny little subset of a subgroup. I, I mean, it was like one person who had a really good morning, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so in that, even the clinical research can be skewed pretty significantly to allow someone to say, well, this does this. Prevagen is just ground up jellyfish. It's nothing. So the placebo effect of that particular nootropic, which is one of the best selling on the market or has been for a long time, is clearly there because there's no significant scientific evidence to say that it would have any impact on brain function, brain health, brain capacity, period. Mm -hmm. So what should people look for when they are shopping for a nootropic supplement? That's a great question. And, and, you know, we talk a lot about diagnostic data being the driving force in the decisions that we make and interventions that we make. But the truth is, is that there's not really a good baseline diagnostic test for your brain to say, well, now I need this. Um, I'm a big believer that polyunsaturated fatty acids, especially in the form of DHA, are essential for brain health. We need that fatty acid in our brain. 